Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. And if you are new to my channel, hello. My name is Gabby and welcome. If you are new here, never seen my face, don't know what I do here on my channel, pretty much all I do here on my little YouTube channel is I cover true crime cases and all of the true crime cases that I cover more on the vintage side. They're all 20 years or older. That's my thing. Today I'm doing an update video about a case that I have covered in the past I, I covered it first and then I did an update video and then this is the second update video on that case. But before we get into the case, you know where we're going with this. Today's video is sponsored and it is sponsored by Magellan TV. Remember the last time that I talked about Magellan TV, I said that they had over 2,000 documentaries. No, 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 no. Now they have over 3,000 documentaries. Magellan TV is dedicated to bringing all of its viewers the highest quality documentaries. If you're someone interested in expanding your overall knowledge of an array of topics, then Magellan TV is for you. From some of the best filmmakers and networks from all around the world. Magellan TV is also adding new content every week. You'll never run out of things to watch and it can be watched anytime and anywhere. It's compatible with Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, Google Play, and iOS. There's also no ads, so your content will never be interrupted. You know, every time that I talk about Magellan TV, I gotta give a little bit of a recommendation, and my true crime documentary recommendation is called Murder in Paradise. Murder in Paradise is a documentary about Hannah Witheridge and David Miller. They were two British backpackers that decided to take a trip to Thailand. Well, on September 15th of 2014, their lifeless bodies were found only yards from the hotel they were staying at. The documentary covers never-before-seen evidence and shows some never-before-seen interviews regarding the case that will take you down a rabbit hole and wondering if your next adventure could end in tragedy. If you want to try Magellan TV for yourself, you can go to try.magellantv.com slash gabulosis or you can click the link in the description of today's video and by doing that you will get one month free of their service to dive into as many documentaries as you want. Thank you Magellan TV for sponsoring yet again another one of my videos and now let's get into the case update. The case of Paul Franzak, we all know it so well, or I hope, I hope we all do. Did you not see my original video on the case? It was posted August 18th of 2019. If you haven't, it will be linked down below in the description of this video. That was my first video on the case, and then I did an update at the end of 2019. So this video is my second update on the case. Now, if it's been a little while since you've watched my video on the case or watched somebody else's video because there's been some great YouTubers that have covered this case, need a little bit of a mental refresher, I'm gonna give that to you right now. In April of 1964, a couple named Dora and Chester Franzak welcomed a baby boy into the world in Chicago, Illinois at Michael Reese Hospital. They named their baby Paul. And when little Paul was only a day old, a woman dressed as a nurse came into the parents' hospital room and said she was going to take the baby to go see the doctor. Well, she took the baby and she never returned. A huge search was done, but their baby was not found. Dora and Chester were devastated to say the least. Then two years later in 1966, they received a call from the FBI. The FBI told them how they found a toddler abandoned in New Jersey on a sidewalk and they believed the toddler was none other than their missing son. Whether Dora and Chester truly believed this child was Paul or they just wanted to give this child a home other than foster care, they brought him home and raised him under the name Paul Franzak. There was a person working on the case back in the 60s that revealed years later that they knew the toddler wasn't Paul, but they let the grieving family adopt him anyway so he'd have a good upbringing, and he definitely did. He grew up in a loving household, but he always had a feeling things were off, especially after seeing newspaper articles about the case. He also didn't look like either of his parents or his brother, and in the year 2012, he decided to finally do a DNA test, and the test results came back a little bit later. This test proved that he was not the biological child of Dora and Chester Franzak. 
This created tension between him and his adoptive parents. They never wanted to know the true results because to them, he was their son. They didn't talk for years, but eventually settled their differences about the issue. After that, Paul was on a search to find out who he really was. He eventually did. He traced down his biological family and discovered that his actual name was Jack Rosenthal. His biological parents, though, were both deceased, and he discovered the grim truth about the situation. His parents were abusive alcoholics who abused not only Jack, but his twin sister, Jill. Yes, Paul not only found out his real name was Jack and who his parents were, but also that he had a twin sister, a twin sister who in today's time is still missing. All baby photos of Jack and his twin sister are gone, and any they were in, Jack and Jill were ripped out of. Family members of the twins told Paul that they wondered where the twins were, but that his biological parents told family that they were being taken care of by someone else. So last year in December of 2019, when we left off on this case, when I did my update video, Paul Franzak, the one adopted by Chester and Dora Franzak, he discovered his true identity and that he had a twin sister. And in my update video, I said how they did find out who the real Paul Franzak was. But at the time, they were not releasing this man's name or a picture of him to the public. Paul released a statement on his blog that read, Hi everyone, it's Paul. We found the real Paul Franzak more than one year ago, in late 2018. But out of respect for his desire to remain anonymous and respect for his family, we did not go public with the story. Nor will I go into detail about it now. I hope you understand. My main mission from the start has been to reunite my mother Dora with the child who was taken from her so many years ago. I have always kept you informed of all my progress, and I have relied greatly on your help and support, and I will continue to rely on you all. But I know what it feels like to have your life turned upside down overnight, and I feel this man and his family deserve their privacy. Thank you, and check back soon, Paul. Well, not that long ago, they finally released a photo of the real Paul Franzak and his you know, adopted name in later time. But this story is very bittersweet because last year in 2019, this man was still alive, but in today's time, he is not. The real Paul Franzak was found living in Manton, Michigan under the name Kevin Ray Beatty. Kevin Beatty at the time of being tracked down was slowly dying of cancer and did not want to speak publicly about the case. He did not want his name shared or a photo of him either, but he actually had previously discovered his true identity when his adult daughter submitted DNA into a genealogy website. Paul Franzak said that he never got the chance to meet Kevin Beatty. He never even got to talk to him on the phone before he passed away, but he said that he did send him a copy of his book about the entire case and his life and his experiences growing up as a different person. And he said that through sources, he was told that Kevin Beatty really enjoyed the book. Reached out to the real Paul and, and his children. And I sent the real Paul my book, and I heard from my, my tipsters that he read the book, he liked it, and he let his friends read it. But as far as communicating with me, nothing. You're all probably wondering if the real Paul Franzak, which is Kevin Beatty, if he ever got to speak to Dora and Chester Franzak, his biological parents. Well, he did get to speak to Dora on the phone quite a few times, but he never got to speak to Chester because Chester Franzak had passed away years prior. According to woodtv.com, Beatty's obituary listed the only name he had known most of his life, along with the birthday he'd always celebrated, March 14, 1964, a month earlier than the kidnapped baby's birthday. Kevin was born on March 14, 1964, and was raised in the Lake City slash Manton area by his parents Robert and Lorraine Fountain, read his obituary. He graduated from Manton High School and worked as a mold maker and machinist since graduating. Kevin enjoyed spending time outdoors and in his garage and garden. He also enjoyed time spent with his close friends and family. A clerk at Manton's lone gas station was stunned to hear about Kevin Beatty's true identity. 
I couldn't imagine that, said Amy Baldwin when Target 8 stopped in during a recent visit to Manton. And then only knowing that a short amount of time before losing his life, that's horrible. Baldwin said Beatty, a regular customer at the gas station, was kind and generous. Always nice, always had a smile on his face, would do anything for you, recalled Baldwin. I know twice he helped somebody get gas. He was that type of person. Their card was declining and they'd already pumped it and he paid for it. He was always trying to do anything he could for anybody. As for the identity of the mystery woman who dressed as a nurse to kidnap baby Franzak, it may remain a mystery. The woman who raised him as Kevin Beatty in Wexford County, Lorraine Fountain, died in 2004. Beatty's stepbrother told Target 8, as well as reporter Ben Bradley of News 8's Chicago sister station, WGN, that Lorraine Fountain had been dating a doctor out of Chicago when she suddenly moved to Arkansas for a year and returned with the baby she raised as Kevin Beatty. It's unclear to Target 8 at this point how Kevin ended up with the last name Beatty. So in this case, there were basically three mysteries, and that was Paul Franzak finding out what his true identity was, which he was actually Jack Rosenthal. Second mystery was finding the real Paul Franzak. So those two things have been figured out. Now Paul Franzak, which the real Jack Rosenthal, is trying to find his twin sister, Jill. Like I discussed in the recap of this case and this video, he doesn't know a lot about his biological parents. He knows their names and he knows that they did not treat him and his sister very well. They were very abusive. They were just not good people. Paul wrote in a blog post, I have not been able to learn what happened to my sister, Jill, at the time that I was abandoned. There was no record of her being missing and no information about her since. It is almost as if she never existed but she did. I have her birth certificate. I've spoken with people who met her when she and I were with the Rosenthal's. Many different people remember her existing, but no one I have found has told me what happened to her. Many people haven't wanted to talk about her at all. That's why I'm going public with these images and asking anyone who might know anything about Jill or this case or the Rosenthal's to please step forward and contact me through this website. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. The images will also be featured in media reports and in newspapers. It may be naive of me, but I've always believed that Jill is still alive and out there somewhere and I'm not going to stop searching for her until I learn the truth, no matter how long that takes. A special thank you to Natalie Murray, the very talented forensic artist who created these images based on photos of me as a child and photos of my parents and other relatives. I haven't found a single photo of Jill herself as a young child. Paul Franzak has tirelessly been trying to locate his twin sister, Jill, for years. He searched previous residences and dug around the yards and used ground penetrating radar, but never found any human remains. Tons of women have come forward thinking they could be Jill, but DNA tests always proved otherwise. Like I've mentioned before in previous videos, you can follow the Facebook page dedicated to this case, which I will have linked below in the description of this video, or you can read Paul's blog, which I will also have linked below in the description of this video. And you can also contact him through his blog or his Facebook page if you do have any information about this case. I do also want to quickly insert a small section of a blog post that Paul had posted on his blog for Mother's Day. And in this post, he wished his adoptive mother, Dora Franzak, a happy Mother's Day. And he also wished his biological mother a happy Mother's Day. And I just wanted to include this little section in this video because it just shows what kind of person Paul is. He writes, Today, I also thought of my biological mother, Marie, who passed away years before I ever knew she was my mother. Since learning her identity, I've spent years trying to understand the circumstances that led her to do the unthinkable, abandon me on a New Jersey sidewalk when I was two years old. I have discovered many things about her life, setbacks, hardships, weaknesses, strengths, 
and I've been able to overcome the anger that I felt for her and replace it with compassion. She did not have an easy life, and I am sure she fought hard to make things work, but sometimes fate and misfortune have other plans for us. On this Mother's Day, I wish I'd had the chance to meet her and know her and understand her and let her know that I forgive her. Not having that chance shows me how important it is on a day like today to let your mother know just what she means to you. When it comes to Paul's biological mother through the years, he did learn quite a lot about her life. And because of that, he was able to see that she had a hard life and she was probably not in the right mental state to raise children. And that doesn't make it okay what she did to her children at all in the slightest, but he's able to forgive her for those things. And stories of forgiveness are so brave to me because I look at some of the stories that I have covered on my channel, some of the cases, and some of the stories of forgiveness and families able to forgive certain people involved in the case, whether it was the person who was responsible or other people involved, it's insane to me because I don't think I would have it in my heart to be able to forgive somebody for doing something so horrible, but Paul, Paul is an amazing person. But with all that being said, let me know your thoughts when it comes to the case of Paul Franzak. I'd love to hear what you have to say and also leave some love down in the comments for Paul himself and also family members of Kevin Beatty. I really wanted to include this case in No Trace November because although it is an update video, there is also no trace when it comes to Jill Rosenthal. I've definitely been very invested in the case of Paul Franzak. It is a case that I dove so deeply into when I did my original video. Of course, I wanted to summarize everything and not make it like a three hour long video, but I dove very deep on this case and it's the only case that I've done two update videos on. I'm highly invested. Now I know that Paul watched my original video on this case because I got reached out to by the man who helped Paul write his book and is helping Paul with this case in general. So Paul did watch my original video, but Paul, if you are watching this video, I do wanna say that me and my subscribers here on my channel wish you nothing but the best when it comes to completely, fully solving this case. With all that being said, I wanna wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving for everybody who is celebrating Thanksgiving. I hope that you have a safe and wonderful holiday and I will see you all in December, which I'm really excited for because I have a new theme for December and the theme for December, how do I put this? Uh, it's some of my favorite cases to cover. Yes, that's that's all I'll give you. And the name for that month is, is very catchy, so I'm very excited. So I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.